Welcome to physics class. Today we are going to talk about kinematics in one dimension. What we mean by kinematics is the study of motion. For this, we, we need to talk about the distance and the displacement and the difference between the distance and displacement. We will talk about average speed and average velocity and the difference between the speed and velocity. We'll talk about instantaneous velocity, then average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration, then we do problems of free fall. The distance is the length is measured in meters, kilometers, inches, feet, etc. So let's say I have a distance between two point A and B. This distance is 10 miles. Now, if I add another 10 miles here, I call it C, 10 miles. So the total distance D will be the sum of these distances, D between A and B, plus the distance between A and C, which is 20 miles. Now, the distance is the total length. You just measure it, and that's it. Doesn't matter if you go from C to A or A to C or from B to A to C. So is the length is a magnitude, doesn't have any directions. The displacement is vector, has a magnitude and direction, and is given by Delta X, if we go in horizontal direction, in that direction, we use Delta X. If we go in vertical direction, we use Delta Y. For the displacement means a difference in the position. That means uh, the, this, uh, we call it the final position, and this is the position at origin. That means the displacement by definition is the, dif is the difference between the final position and the initial position. Let's do an example. If I go uh, from this position, I call it x0, which is negative 10 meters, to other position x, let's say, is 9 meters. The displacement will be just the difference of the final position minus initial position. The difference between the final position and initial position. So it will be the final position is 9 minus minus 10. It will be 19. And here is plus 19 meters. So what does mean plus 19 meters? means we are going in east direction. So, the displacement is vector has a magnitude, in this case is 19 meters, and the direction is going east. Remember, x is east, plus x is east, minus x is west, uh, plus y is north, negative y is south. So this is what we mean by displacement, is the magnitude and direction. Let's say if we go from vertical axis, let's say we go uh, from north and uh, the initial position, let's say 20 meters, and we go south with a final position is, uh, let's say, uh, 10 meters. Negative means we are south. We use negative. So the delta y, the displacement, is the difference between the final position and initial position. Here we just, final position in this case is negative 10 meters minus 20 meters. It will be negative 30 meters. This is what will be our delta y. So did you see here we have Negative means we are heading south with this, uh, the magnitude is 30 meters. That means we went from north to south. This is what does mean. Um, 
Now, for, let's say if uh, if it was a distance, if I was at this position, let's say it is 20, and then I come south, and I have this 10 here, negative 10 here. Now, the distance is just the length. The length I traveled from 20 to the origin, I add then the length I traveled from the origin to where I am. In this case, the distance is the length is just 30 meters. So this is the difference. The distance is the length. We don't take care of the direction. We just see, we measure the length between the two points. But the displacement depends only on the final position and initial position. What does it mean? If I go, let's say, uh, if uh, I was initially, let's go to the first example. If I was um, at x0, let's say, uh, negative 10 meter, and I ended the 9 meter, and then let's say from x0, I went somewhere west, and then I did something else between here, or I came back, and then I ended here. So with the only thing we will take care of, of the initial position and the final position. We don't care about the path the object took to go from A to B. We, we go just to the final, initial and the final positions. And the difference between the final position and initial position is our displacement. Is a vector, has magnitude, and has direction. Average speed is the distance traveled over the time it took to travel this distance. It is given by V with distance over time. So let's say we, we went from one point A to point B, and this distance we traveled, let's say, is 100 miles. So the time it took us to make this trip, let's say two hours. So the average speed is the total distance we traveled, in this case is 100 miles, divide, divided by two hours. It will be 50 miles per hour. Uh, by definition, the speed is positive, is the magnitude, uh, uh, which is the distance over time. The distance over time is positive, its color is positive. So now we go to the velocity. Velocity is vector, has magnitude and direction. The velocity also, we'll write it like that. Delta A is delta X over delta T which is the difference in the position over the time. Delta T will be T minus T zero or just T. This time it can be just T means is the time it took us to go from initial position to final position. Okay, let's do an example. So we have reference X and Y axis. This is our X positive y positive, x negative, and y negative. We call also x positive east and y positive north, x negative west, and y negative south. Now, uh, let's take an example. Let's say I go from one position, x zero, let's say, is 10 miles. Then I end at x negative 20 miles, example. And it took me one hour to go from x zero to x. So t, one hour. Now, our uh, average velocity, we said by definition, is the displacement over time. The displacement is the final position minus initial position over the time it took us to go from one position to the other. So we said we started x0 is the, uh, the position at origin, and x is the final position. In this case, it will be minus 20 miles, minus 10 miles, 
divided by 1 hour. Now, what will be? Clean this now. As we know, is x is east, x positive is east. Now, our VA will be just negative 30 miles per hour. Now, what that means, this negative means we are heading west. This negative means we are going west. This 30 miles per hour is the magnitude of velocity. Magnitude of velocity. So remember, velocity has a magnitude and direction. Is a vector. In order to go from one point to the other, we need a magnitude and direction, which is velocity. If let's say if I go just with speed, if I go with speed, I can I can speed uh, as much as I want here. Uh, I can have uh, I can go in circles here, and I have very high speed, but I will never get to the point X if I don't have the direction. That means in order for us to go from one point to other, we need the magnitude and direction, which is velocity. We need the velocity, not just speed. The instantaneous uh, velocity is the average velocity when the interval time is infinitesimally short. What we mean by that? We say it is the average velocity. The average velocity is delta x over delta t. Then when the, the interval time is infinitesimally short, means it's the limit of delta t when the delta t goes to zero of delta x over delta t. This is what we call instantaneous velocity. So this uh, instantaneous velocity, we, we are going to use calculus physics with calculus one to solve this uh, more problems. For the ones who are taking basic physics, uh, we, uh, we will not go in details about this point, but I'm going to add another video about instantaneous velocity. The average acceleration is the rate of change of velocity is given by A, sometimes we add AV means average, which is delta V over delta T, which is the final velocity minus initial velocity over T minus T0. So let's give an example. Let's say I have uh, an object that moved from a position, uh, let's say, uh, with velocity at origin 5 meters per second and went to uh, 10 meter per second in, uh, let's say, in two seconds. What will be the acceleration? It will be the final velocity, which is 10 meter per second. Remember, uh, the velocity has magnitude and direction. Let's say uh, it, all, the object it was going east and it continue east. Uh, it was going east and it continue east. It just uh, added the speed. Uh, now, uh, what will be? The acceleration is uh, final velocity, which is 10 meter per second minus 5 meters per second divided by two seconds. Remember the direction we have east east will be just east. Now let's say if I have east west, let's say I started east and I, add, I ended west. You have to pay attention to this. If you started east and you say is positive, now if you end west you have to put negative for your velocity. Then you apply this definition to solve the problem. So make sure you pay attention to the details of velocities because they, ha they have magnitude and directions. You need to take care of the directions because the acceleration also has magnitude and direction. So let's do this. Um, 
uh, we said the object is going to go east. We just found the magnitude and then it clean this. Okay, uh, we found the magnitude, which is, this is, we say, 5. It will be 10 minus 5 is 5 meter per second, divided by 2 seconds. It will be 2.5 meter per second squared. This is what will be the average acceleration, magnitude. And the direction, the direction will be east. Okay? So, because we said anything that goes east is positive, anything that goes west is negative. Now, like I said, you have to pay attention to the details of the velocities, the initial and the final, because the acceleration is vector, has magnitude and direction also. You look here, velocity, here, uh, so to show that the acceleration is vector, you look just to the definition. It depends on the velocity, and we said the velocity is magnitude and direction then the acceleration has to have magnitude and direction also. The instantaneous acceleration is the average acceleration when the time interval is infinitesimally short and is given by the limit of delta t and it goes to zero of delta v over delta t. I repeat, is the instantaneous acceleration is the average acceleration when the time interval is too short. So I will explain this point in the future in future videos. If you have any questions, you may put remarks and I will go over this point. For now, we are going to talk about the motion in one dimension. And in the next video, I will talk about equations of motion and how we solve problems of reform. Thank you.